Directed energy weapons like high energy lasers could be a game changer in future wars. When it comes to military might, the United States Air Force has always been one step ahead of the competition. From the first powered flight in 1903, through the construction of current aircraft and drones, the Air Force has continuously pushed the frontiers of what is possible in aviation, and its most recent invention is no exception. Now, the U.S. Air Force has confirmed that it's developing a weapon capable of annihilating civilization as we know it. So come along as we dissect the newest and most complex invention of the U.S. Air Force, whose super-powerful abilities will leave you awestruck. After years of research and development, the United States Air Force has received the first shipment of operational lasers placed aboard fighter aircraft. The 60-kilowatt laser pods were designed and produced by Lockheed Martin for the contract, with two subcomponents already delivered by Northrop Grumman and Boeing. The Air Force is anticipated to start field testing soon, with a plan for actual field deployment to follow. The United States military has been developing effective lasers for use in combat since the 1980s. Those first versions were, unfortunately, unworkable because they needed so many resources to function. Truck and ship-mounted lasers have lately been subjected to testing and deployment by armed forces around the world. Israel's military has now announced its new Iron Beam laser weapon, which will work in tandem with their existing Iron Dome missile defense system to bring down enemy aircraft, drones, and maybe missiles. In a test conducted last December, the U.S. Navy announced success with a ship-mounted laser also manufactured by Lockheed Martin, which successfully destroyed a floating target meant to simulate a surface attack. In addition, the Navy successfully shot down fixed-wing UAVs, quadcopters, and high-speed drones that were emulating subsonic cruise missiles in February of this year, during a test firing of their second laser weapon, another Lockheed device. The Air Force has received all the parts they need to begin installing laser systems on their planes. If this is accomplished, it may herald a dramatic change in the weapons and tactics used in aerial conflict. Officials from Lockheed and the Air Force Research Laboratory claim that the new laser system was given to the Air Force in February, but that the business is only now making this information public. The system, dubbed LANCE for Laser Advancements for Next Generation Compact Environments, is notable for its low weight, small size, and low power requirements all of which are crucial when installing such a weapon platform aboard a fighter jet. Lockheed Martin claims this new laser to be the world's smallest and lightest high-energy laser in its power class. If we ever want to have a fully functional laser weapon system in the air, this is a must-have metric. The Lance system and its components are the most compact and capable laser weapon technologies produced to date. As stated by Kent Wood, the acting director of the Air Force Research Lab, Northrop Grumman contributed a beam control system, while Boeing supplied the pod mounting mechanism, both of which are essential to Lance's functionality. The former assists in concentrating the laser's strength, and the latter allows the laser to covertly target a variety of active fighters. The Air Force, like the Navy, has been unusually open about its plans to expand its arsenal to include lasers and other directed energy weapon systems. One giant stride in that direction is the delivery of this system and its constituent parts. A prior Lockheed directed energy weapon for the Army was six times the size of Lance. It was a 60 kilowatt laser that had been developed as part of the robust electric laser initiative. Exactly how much electricity Lance can generate is still a mystery, although preliminary estimates put the number well below 100 kilowatts. For a fighter-based laser, especially one that can be deployed within the constraints of a pod, Lance's decreased power requirements compared to other earlier weapons are crucial. If Lance is successful in its defensive role, it may be used to inform the creation of additional offensive laser weapons, such as those that can engage enemy aircraft and drones at greater ranges than is possible when aiming at a rapidly approaching anti-aircraft missile launched from the ground or from an enemy aircraft. As a subcontract from the Air Force's Self-Protect High Energy Laser Demonstrator or SHIELD program, awarded in November 2017, Lance has been in development since that time. Lockheed Martin provides the Lance laser weapon itself, while Boeing manufactures the pod it is housed in and Northrop Grumman develops the beam control system that focuses and maintains the laser's intensity on its intended target. The multiple shield subsystems are the most compact and capable laser weapon technologies produced to date. 
As stated by Kent Wood, Acting Director of the AFRL's Directed Energy Directorate, according to Wood's comments, mission utility analysis and wargaming studies are still in the planning stages at AFRL, suggesting that actual test work is still in its infancy at the lab. The outcomes of these investigations would also be used to set specific aims for future tests and demonstrations, as he put it. Lockheed's Tyler Griffin noted that in the program's subsequent phase, Lance would be coupled with a thermal system to control temperature. We don't know which aircraft will be armed with Lance as it moves on to flight trials and hopefully airborne firing trials, but that information is still forthcoming. Griffin, however, has stated that a variety of potential applications and platforms are being investigated for prospective demonstrations and tests. For example, in earlier Lockheed Martin sketches, the pod was seen being carried by an F-16 fighter plane. Furthermore, while the primary focus of S.H.I.E.L.D. is on demonstrating the viability of active defense for fighter jets in high-risk circumstances, authorities have discussed the prospect of adopting the same technology for larger, slower-moving combat and combat support aircraft. In 2019, Boeing sent a pod shape, but not its internal subsystems, for a test flight on an F-15 fighter jet used by the Air Force. The Demonstration Laser Weapon System, or DLWS, has already destroyed multiple air-launched missiles over White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico during ground tests this year. In the absence of current funding for a flight demonstration, a decision on the initial test platform for the full shield system is unlikely to be made until after the demonstration has been completed. A similar lack of a concrete transition strategy for Lance and Shield's potential development into a program of record exists. Now, the schedule for all of this to work is also unclear, with AFRL telling Breaking Defense that it had not yet made choices on when airborne experiments may occur. It was announced by AFRL late in 2017 that by 2021, a laser would be tested on a tactical fighter jet. In 2020, Lockheed Martin announced its intention to install one of its lasers on tactical aircraft by 2025. Yet the Air Force has encountered some issues with these technologies, delaying the start of flight testing of a potted laser weapon until 2023, which was announced last year. The COVID-19 epidemic slowed production and technical issues contributed to the delay. AFRL stated in February of last year that it expected to receive the Boeing pod for shield by the end of the month, with the remaining components, including Lance, arriving shortly after it. Although AFRL has previously described the technological obstacles involved in producing a directed energy laser to drop an adversarial supersonic missile as tremendous, the reason for the delay this time is unclear. Nevertheless, Air Force pilots have already started practicing operations in a simulated battlefield using potted airborne laser weapons. Recently, the U.S. Air Force released a model of an F-15 fighter jet with a laser weapon pod attached to its centerline station. The model was made in a wind tunnel. In a simulated color sclerin image put out by the service, you can see the many flow disturbances around an F-15 Eagle with a pod. Arnold Engineering Development Complex said in a statement that the 716th Test Squadron now has a new way to test aero optical systems. AEDC worked with MZA Associated Corp to make a system that can get wavefront information from anywhere near laser-directed aircraft models. This tool, which is called the Integrated Directed Energy Aero Optical Surrogate, or IDEAS, lets engineers test how laser energy behaves and, if necessary, figure out how to precondition it. Together with Captive Trajectory Omnidirectional Reflector, or CAPTOR, the tests are done. SHIELD's primary goal is to show how effective a potted laser defense system could be implying that such a system could one day serve as a useful complement to temporary defenses like infrared flares, chaff, or electronic warfare devices. However, there are drawbacks to using laser defense systems, such as the fact that they are susceptible to air conditions, which can reduce the effectiveness of the directed energy beam's range and intensity. As lasers can only engage one target at a time, they will most likely be used to supplement existing decoys and countermeasures rather than replace them. We have looked into the potential of laser weaponry in the future battlefield. Yet, in the end, a high-energy laser weapon that is fully matured might really be utilized for a number of functions outside from the defense of airplanes against missiles. It's possible that it may be used as an offensive weapon as well, fighting hostile aircraft during close-quarters air warfare, intercepting cruise missiles, or even striking targets on the ground. These are all possibilities. 
Even while it is unclear to what extent previous problems with the underlying technology have been resolved, the delivery of Lance earlier this year is undeniably an important milestone on the path towards the creation of a fighter-based laser weapon that is capable of performing its intended function. The use of lasers and other forms of directed energy weapons is still shrouded in a cloud of mystery. The United States Army and Navy have been conducting successful tests of systems manufactured by Lockheed Martin, and the pace at which these tests are being conducted is accelerating. So it may be only a matter of short time until lasers become almost standard equipment on military aircraft. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what are your thoughts about the latest innovation of the US Air Force? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here, which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one. Guys in the next one.